This is Countdown to Christmas, episode one. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's the first episode of Countdown to Christmas, and I'm really excited to be doing the series again. And Brittany and I are recording a Skype conversation, so let's hope this goes well. And I'm really excited to do it, because if this works, you don't know what that means, right? We could do this more often. Yeah. <laughs> and so I hope it works. All right. We are going to do a review today. So, Brittany, tell them what we're doing a review of. Uh, the Hot Hand Casements of Many Colors. Circle of Love. Circle of Love. This is... You didn't know, Denise, I've been very, very excited for this. I think they might have figured that out. We all have. <laughs> if you haven't, you've been living under a rock, because I've been posting it on social media for whatever. Um, yeah. Um, but this one is the continuation to Code of Many Colors, which, by the way, is streaming on NBC's website right now, which we need to watch again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! What did you do? Nah. Oh. I slapped off. The first one is streaming on NBC's website right now, and this one will be streaming tomorrow, so you can watch it tomorrow. And we're going to together, right? We did last right. year. I wish she could have been here. They need to stop. Playing. Right. They need to stop playing them in the middle of the week. But uh, anyway, so I did a review last year on the first one. I suck at reviews, y'all. <laughs> I do. I don't never. Because I don't want to. You know, I don't want to give away too much. Then I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't want to give away too much. But if I don't say what I want to say, then I feel like I haven't told enough. Right. So I suck at reviews. So maybe with her being here, it'll be a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is a continuation of the first one, and it picked Earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it picks up where the first, about what six weeks after the first one left off. Yes. And it starts out quite similar to the first one, actually. Yeah. It did. Yep, it did. But um, this one, it, the first one was based in the summer and early fall of 1955 when Dolly was nine years old. And this one is based at Christmas time in 1955. So just it's about six to eight weeks after the first movie, right? Yeah. But it's kind of funny because it was filmed one year later. So everybody's yeah. much older than six weeks, you know, so it's yeah. kind of funny, but I don't care because it was, it was still amazing. Okay, hands down, it was, you know, it was amazing. But, yeah. so, what should we tell them? Where do we uh, go? Favorite parts. <laughs> Sorry, not favorite parts. parts. Okay. Let's do favorite funny parts first. <laughs> you go first. What was yours? I like when Bella or Stella was cast as the Bethlehem star. Yeah. She told that Dolly. Oh, look at that, Dolly. I'm afraid I'm going to be a star. <laughs> yeah, that was adorable. And, and side note, sidetrack. Okay, that's one complaint I have about this movie. Little Stella did not have as many one-liners as she did in the first movie, and that's a problem because they were absolutely adorable. That's where the sour pickle thing came from, if you don't know. Yeah. And she didn't have as many one-liners, and <laughs> it, that's a problem because they were they were adorable. They were, you know? Right. Like, for instance, one of the favorite one-liners, besides the sour pickle from the first movie, is... We'll be praying for you in heaven, Dolly. Yeah. That one, and she didn't have as many one-liners this time, so that, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My favorite funny part, um, probably when she told Miss Bass off. Yeah. Okay. How? Well, here we go. Basically, the story premises is. It, like I said, it's Christmas 1955, and Dolly's dad and the kids want to make up money to get their mama a wedding ring. Because she's got nine kids and never had a wedding ring. 
And so they all want to make up money to get her a ring. Well, Dolly earns, you know, a good share of the money. From, and part of it came from the town tramp. <laughs> whom later Dolly had her look after. But the snooty woman in town um, takes the money away from little Dolly. And ironically, side note again, <laughs> Dolly herself, the real Dolly, played the town tramp, which is totally cool. Um, and then her sister is the one that played the snooty storekeeper, Corla Bass. It's her sister Stella in real life. And so they have a scene, and she takes away the money that the tramps give to Dolly, and she refuses to give it back because it's trash money. I told you she was going to say that. <laughs> it's trash money, and she's like, you got to give me back my money you, you stole, and it, it's just hilarious. Um, so, I tell you what, since I can't play it on here for copyright reasons, why don't I link it down below so they can see it? Yeah. Because that's just hilarious. But that's my favorite part. It, and she just, she go, she lets her have it for taking the money away from her and not doing how she's supposed to. And she says, it's not personal. It's just business. Using Corla Bath's own words against her. Um, that's my favorite funny part. So, okay, what's your favorite, like, not emotional, but favorite, I guess, not emotional, but serious moment. The one, one that wasn't necessarily funny, but more serious. What do you think? What was yours? Um, when they were writing letters to each other. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That was dev that was definitely that was it was emotional and it was good. Um yes. see one one of the things that Dolly's dad does is takes a job in a coal mine to get money for the ring. And Dolly's dad never learned to read and write. So anything that was sent to him had to be read to him by someone else. And if you wanted to send a letter back, same thing, had to be written for him. And they were writing letters back and forth to each other when the mine accident happened, the mine collapsed. So his last words, so to speak, were words to his wife. Yeah. Yeah. That that got me. I ain't gonna lie, I got I got a little teary eyed right now. Okay, y'all, I'm a crybaby anyway, so <laughs> I am I bald lies out with the person to be in this one too. Um probably my favorite serious moment you know, when it was when her grandpa, who's, the, who's also the preacher, comes to the church and um, says, you know, that she got, that she says, Grandpa, I got the ring for Mama so Daddy can put it on her finger. And, you know, and she, he said, your mama's going to be so happy. And she said, no, Mama won't be happy unless Daddy's home for Christmas. Yeah. And then he gets up and he's like, I gotta go. Immediately, he's like, I, I, I can't stay to watch the rehearsal. I gotta go and get Lee and bring him home to his wife and, and babies. <laughs> that was Yeah. Cool. And, okay, I know I'm a crybaby, but I gotta ask you this because I want to say this. What was the most emotional part for you? Was there one? Like, I'm not telling you cry, because let's face it, I did. But, <laughs> but, like, what was the most emotional moment for you? Probably when, uh, when Amy had that talk with Willoughby. Oh, oh, that was, yeah, I cried. Another part in the story is not only about getting um, their mama ring, but also the worst blizzard that have, that has ever hit Sevier County hit, and they had 12 to 14 foot snow drifts. And Dolly and her family were trapped in their cabin with no food, no water, no heat, no anything, no nothing, and they were ready to die. And that was. And she had a talk with her oldest daughter, who is Willa Dean, and said, I want you to protect the babies and let them not be afraid when the time comes. Because they were literally preparing to die. That got me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That, that got me. 
probably the most emotional moment for me was when they were preparing to die. And, um, Abby Lee was singing to him. Circle of Love. Which, by the way, Dolly wrote that. Um, and she and Jennifer actually sang it on The Voice last night. Which, I, I showed you that. It was amazing. They did really good. Did we ever figure out what that, uh... What her and her sisters were doing at that place? Yeah, that's up. Which one now? Where? Ever figure out what now? We thought it was a minor funeral or something. I mean, I guess it was the play. I don't know. Yeah, Jennifer Nettles posted a photo on Instagram of <laughs> her and her sisters all dressed up. And we thought it was a minor funeral. But nobody died. Thank God. Because I don't want to cry any more than I already did. But we thought it yeah, was a minor the play. It had to be. But it didn't look like Jake's church. Um, we actually, let me go get it. I'm gonna go get the thing, the paper. We actually, um, did, made predictions. I started with the predictions, and as time went on, she added more to it. And we started making predictions about what was gonna be in the movie, and I wrote them all down. And we had 75 predictions, by the way. 75. Guess how many we got right? Guess. 35. So, I'm gonna go get the paper. Okay, I tell you what, let's rate the movie. On a scale of 1 to 5, what do you give it? Uh, the not what you're looking to watch. It's a solid 5. I, don't, I think, I agree, and I'm not saying that because I'm a Dolly fan, and it was it was definitely a five for me too. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, if looking, huh? If you're looking for a family Christmas music movie, it's not too much about Christmas, but <laughs> well, it kind of was. I mean, the premise was around Christmas, but I don't think it would necessarily have to be Christmas to watch it because one, duh. I'm gonna watch it yeah. every day anyway, but um, <laughs> but also from a person, another person's standpoint, I don't think it necessarily has to be Christmas because yes, it is Christmas, but it's a continuation of the story. You know, it picks up where the other left off. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a continuation of a story, so I don't think if you like, you know, I don't think it necessarily has to be Christmas to watch it. Um, but I would give it a five because I'm a Dolly fan. I mean, I think everybody on the planet knows that by now. Um, I should have worn my Dolly shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that, like I said, I don't think it has to be Christmas for you to watch it. And you don't really have to be a Dolly fan to watch it, I don't think. I mean, you know... I mean, you're not the biggest dog in the world. You still like it. I mean... Yeah. And I think it's really neat because, like I said, we made predictions about this movie based on the last one and, and what I know about Dolly and the sneak peeks. And we got a lot right. You know, there were some that I wish we had got right that we didn't get right. Like, the school teacher and Dolly's uncle being a couple. So, Sam, if you happen to watch this by any chance of a miracle, why didn't you put that in there? <laughs> is she playing again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, oh, tell them what you said about um Miss Moody and Uncle Bill. If they didn't put it in there, what would we gonna do? Right on <laughs> Yes, we should. We totally should. I could see. It. I could see it happening. Um. Um. We we said because we wanted the school Dolly school teacher Miss Moody and her uncle Bill to be a couple so badly. I mean, we was like dreaming up this whole romance in our head. Okay. Yeah. And it was, but it was pretty good. It did say so myself. I mean, you know. And we were dreaming up this whole romance in our head and all this, and they didn't even meet, like at all. <laughs> they didn't meet. No. They didn't like. 
I didn't even like cross paths like, oh hi, I'm Dolly's teacher, you must be your Uncle Bill, she talks so much. Nothing. And I'm like, seriously? That Sam that was the only fault with this whole movie is that she didn't make them a couple. I mean, I know it's based on Dolly's real life, but come on. Creative liberties here, give us something. I think the movie is a creative liberty anyway. <laughs> no, actually, she's based on one of Dolly's teachers. Well, actually, she's based on three of Dolly's teachers, but one in particular. Um, because, you know, in the first movie, Miss Moody noticed Dolly's talent for writing and storytelling. Um, and that's obvious when she wrote about herself and who she admires most in the first movie, but um, Miss Moody is like a like a, what do you call it? Like a combined of like two or three different teachers that really uh -huh. helped Dolly discover her talent. Like there was no teacher in her life actually named Miss Moody, but it was a lot easier to make it one teacher than have like two or three different ones. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, like yeah, like Corla Bass is what well, there was actually no real Corla Bass, but she is a combination. That's the word I was looking for. Combination of three different people. Like she was. Three different gossip ladies in the town. By the way, that's the one that took the money from Dolly. Um, and she was a com like a combination of three, I think, three different ladies. So even though that person isn't real, the people they're based on are real. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so Miss Moody herself. I mean, yeah, it's a fictional character because there was no real Miss Moody. But where the idea for Miss Moody comes from, that is real. So, but, and I definitely think and almost know it's either going to be a sequel or a series. And it better be a series. I'm calling it right now, y'all. It better be a series because just, well, it just has to be. <laughs> um, other things that is in the movie, or not in the movie, that should have been in the movie, because it does happen in real life, is that when Dolly's parents first got married, they were only 15 and 17 years old. Um, this was like back in 1939, 1940. Yeah. And when they got married, they were only 15 and 17 years old. They had absolutely no money. They were poor. And at Christmas time, obviously they wanted to get each other something. But they had no money. Dolly's mom had one dollar. So she bought Dolly. She bought her husband, Dolly's dad. A box of chocolate covered cherry and a pretty handkerchief to wrap it in. And ever since, from every year after, for the entire time they were married, every Christmas, she bought him a box of chocolate covered cherry. Well, that wasn't in the movie. Should have been in the movie, but it wasn't. Um, and I was I was kind of disappointed because that was their special tradition, you know. Yeah. So, and so that should definitely be another thing. Um, because that really did happen. That was like their special tradition. Every every Christmas, she would get him. Obviously, she in later years she got him more things, but it was like their special, I guess, romantic gesture. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about the vision. Um, one of the things that Dolly's mom has and she's had been, had she's had them since she was a little girl um is visions of things to come visions and dreams it, it, same situation in the last movie and she kept having this recurring dream that her babies and her were freezing to death and lee was not home that's her husband was not there. He was nowhere to be found, and it was just her and the baby. And in the dream, um, you know, everybody's face was like iced over and literally frozen. And you see her mom in the dream walking around, and she gets to Dolly, and Dolly says, "Are we dead, Mama?" And that was it for me. I was no, 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 no. Mm. <laughs> and the truth is, the vision came true. I mean, well, not all the way. Nobody died, but, you know, it. part of it came true, which makes it even more freaky. Um, and so that, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's all I can say about that. What did you think about the vision? I mean, we knew, we knew it was coming, but we didn't know exactly what it was going to be. You know, like how it was going to play it out. 
So what did you think? Yeah, it was creepy. Yeah. It was good. It was good, but it was freaky. And especially when she woke up screaming and crying. That was... No, yeah. I don't even... No. I can't imagine me in her shoes, her babies, starving, cold, sick. Yeah. Being, being so cold, and I quote, the tears were freezing on their faces. Alright, I know we're going in reverse a little bit here, because we just started talking about the series, but there is an absolute hilarious part in the movie when Dolly and her best friend Judy, who, by the way, they're still best friends today, go to their teacher's house, and Dolly has never seen an indoor bathroom before. Remember, we're talking about 55 here. Um, Dolly has never seen an indoor bathroom before, and at Miss Moody's house, because Miss Moody's house is more modern, and you know, she has more money. She has a indoor bathroom. And, no. Oh. Tell <laughs> them what did she did. She, she thought, thought the toilet was a personal foot washer. <laughs> and she stuck her foot in the toilet. I like, I like how Beauty described it as an outhouse, but inside. Yeah, yeah. her best friend's like, uh, Dolly, that ain't no foot washer. That's an outhouse, but inside the house. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> and then when she snatches her foot out, ew! <laughs> oh, Lord. But, okay, so... I think we pretty much talked about everything. It, I will link that clip of her giving Miss Bass what for, and the extended trailer down below, because and like as you can already guess, we recommend it to everybody. Um, and I, oh, I need to link Jennifer and Dolly's song down below too. Um, because it was beautiful, and it will be on um, NBC's website tomorrow. So I'll link the first one and this one down below so you can watch it if you want to, because. I'm going to watch it every day until it's not on Hulu anymore. And then I'm getting the DVD. <laughs> Ask her. I have the first movie completely memorized. She literally wore it out. Literally. Literally. It will <laughs> not play. My DVD. Okay, y'all. My DVD won't play past, like, it'll play the first, what, probably 15 minutes of the movie? <laughs> probably, like, the first 15, between... 10 and 20 minutes of the movie, and then it stops. It will not play anymore, and it's completely gone. And that's because I watched it almost every day for the first month after I got it, and then at least once a week afterward. Because, you know, can't forget a theme. That would be bad. <laughs> and, oh, and so, yeah. So, I'm going to watch it every day. And it's going to be out five days before Christmas when I'm flat broke and don't have anyone to spend on it. I have a problem with that. I mm. know. Uh, okay, so that is our review. If you decide to watch it after hearing what we said, or if you watched it, let us know what you think. Um, because it was definitely a good movie. And so. And you definitely watch it. Yes say goodbye for now and this is the Hi. end of episode one and I'm not sure what I'm going to do for episode two yet because I kind of what I was going to do kind of messed up but anyhow so like I said let us know down below if you watched it or if you do watch it so bye